Oh yeah. This stuff is everywhere. Well, all my hard work with uh, painting the axle <laughs> is uh, it's in vain at the moment until I repaint it again. Well, it's a uh, nice muggy January day, raining outside, and uh, I don't feel like doing much today. But unfortunately, I don't have the liberty of sitting back until I get all this stuff done on the Dakota. So the good news is all the brake parts are here. New shoes, wheel cylinder, hardware kit, uh, self-adjuster cable. Got all that so that we can get started on the brakes back here and I usually don't go into depth on doing rear brakes on this channel because uh, drum brakes especially because I've always said it's kind of something you just got to do but you know what why don't I show you guys my process and uh, maybe it might be helpful for you maybe you've done drum brakes a hundred times and it won't be um, but you know that's what we're gonna do today I'm not sure we're gonna have time to do much else and uh, I don't really want to get it out in the weather or anything today anyway because it's it's just gross out um, plus again I mean look at that Ew. plus I'm working on some of the I'm trying to treat some of the rust and get that all uh, sanded down and I would love to paint it but I'm not gonna paint it and you know this so <laughs> it is what it is so let me let me get started on the process of the drum brakes and uh we'll go from there well let's get this uh let's get these brakes torn down fyi i always leave one side don't do them both at one time which like I, i'm not basically what i mean is i'm not gonna <clears throat> disassemble this side and then disassemble that side and then reassemble or just leave one side together because you can use it as a reference for the other side that way if you get confused as the way things are coming together you can go look on the other side and be like oh well that's that's where that goes so and now I'm going to I'm gonna fix this because it is full of brake fluid because that wheel cylinder is leaking and we can't have that so let's take care of that real quick with some uh some brake clean you know oh yeah this stuff is everywhere look how dark that stuff is down there been leaking for a while and i had no clue well all my hard work with uh Painting the axle <laughs> is uh, it's in vain at the moment until I repaint it again. But that's okay. So let me show you a couple of things that I'm going to use to do these. This vice grip main tool right here. This is going to do the majority of the stuff for me. Screwdriver or pry bar. I need a, uh, what is this, 3 8 socket to get the... Uh, Wheel cylinder off, and then uh, and uh, the clamp, and I'll show you all that in a little bit. But uh, let's get started with pulling this thing apart. And like I said before, vice grip is going to be my main tool for this. They make all kinds of drum tool kits and stuff like that, but to me, nothing works as well as a set of vice grips to get these springs off. Maybe. Note that this is going on the right side. This is where the cable goes for the self-adjuster. 
and can't quite get it up. There we go. So that part's done, right? This is the broken self-adjuster cable that probably has been causing some issues. This is the retainer for the shoes. So I'll put these over here. Here we go. So add a needle nose to that list and then the rest of this should come off. The crossbar here and the hump goes up. Right? Good to know. And then this is the emergency brake and then the rest of this stuff is at the bottom here just the spring that comes off and the adjuster comes out all right these are the five things that you're going to want to make sure you don't throw away the crossbar at the top the adjuster self-adjuster the this aligns the cable for the self adjuster. This holds your pads in or your uh, shoes. And then the cable. Except mine's broken, so I got a new one. So hopefully yours isn't broken. So don't throw that stuff away because you're going to need to reuse it. I'm going to clean it all up. I'm going to work on cleaning this more up too after I pull the uh, cylinder off. because, Or maybe even before because it's just really nasty with deposits and stuff like that and I'd like to get it cleaned up all right let's get this uh, wheel cylinder out of here this is a 3 8 wrench and uh, it's gonna go back on the line back here and carefully loosen it up sweet it's moving didn't turn and back it all the way up Now, two three-eighths headed bolts and hold it in. Don't lose the bolts. Pop it right out and it's all wet, yeah. It's been leaking for a while down here. It's greasy AF. You can get you some, some better light here. Yeah, this thing is messed up. You can see how nasty it is in there. So, must have been leaking for a while. A little wire brush here. Get everything loose. I think that's about as clean as we're going to get it. And it's a whole lot better than it was. Okay. Now I'm going to get the new cylinder and kind of reverse that process of installing it so we don't lose too much brake fluid. Alright, let's compare these guys. want to make sure that bolt pattern looks right. Everything's in the right position, and then they're, you know, the same size and looking pretty good to me. So, I'm going to send it. Okay, so, these things are filthy. I'm going to use my wire wheel here to get them all cleaned up. And especially this one, because it doesn't want to adjust or move or anything. So, these rear brakes may have not been working. <laughs> Which might explain why it's so easy to do a burnout. Um... Uh, so I need to get all this stuff cleaned up. Again, I'm just going to use my wire wheel on my grind or uh, whatever you want to call it, bench grinder here. So let me get all that done. All right, so this guy is not moving. So 
just gonna throw it in the vise and use a screwdriver to move it. There it goes. Okay, Oop, wrong way. This is reverse thread. Noted. That's coming right out now though, that's good. So I'm gonna clean this up. If I can find it. Let me throw a little bit of a cleaner in here. Fantastic. Clean that up a little bit. We throw this in the uh, poker. And these self adjusters, you want them, you want them to move really, really easily. So that being locked up like that is a bad thing. So when we put it together now, we we'll use some lithium grease. And I'm gonna coat the threads. Remember it's reversed there. And some of this is gonna push out and that's okay. And then this side is the other like plunger. And make sure I put a little grease on this as well. There you go. Now both sides work move really really easy. And that's what we want. So, now it's time for a reassembly. I forgot something here. I should have taken this off as well. It's a little pin. This is what helps the self adjuster stay in place and move and ratchet. And there's a spring behind it. You don't want to pull all that out because we're going to use it again. All right, so this is the right side of the brake over here. Um, it has the pin at the bottom. So we want to find the same one, which they might be universal. I'm not sure, like as far as side to side, but look at the pad difference on that. I, it's safe to say uh, these brakes were cooked. But um, anyway, just make sure everything matches up, which they are. And then I'm going to put this to the side. This was the left side over here. And we're going to see that we have everything matching up here. Interesting. This brake side's not as bad as the other. So I'm going to start with putting this dude through the hole up here. So this is a, like a little finger. And it goes in this hole right here. So before we start anything, we've got to make sure that's in place and it stays in place. Which it does. If I get everything right. You know, sometimes I pull the camera out and I think I just choke, but I was able to get it on there. I pulled the clamp that I had off here so I had some more flexibility. And usually these things aren't too big of a problem for me. So I don't, I don't know why it gave me so much trouble. Okay, let's try this again. Even though the camera's on, let's see if I choke. All right, so I'm gonna, my pen is in. I'm gonna set up my little spring and retainer here. I like to set it up so that it's vertical. And put my little, my little vice grip on it. 
and uh, it's sharp, so I'm gonna cover it up with a towel. But let me get this dude ready. Round circle goes against that, right? So you know which side you're on. You put this dude in here. Hold it in place. Let me get my rag right. Here it goes. See, that's how it was supposed to go on the first time. Of course not, right? We're not allowed that happen. Well, now we're cooking with something. All right, let's see how much we can get done before the battery runs out here. So I'm gonna put this linkage stuff back on here. So this is that spring I took off earlier. And you want this backside that's straight to be inside the brake shoe. And then it kind of just hangs out like that. I wonder if I can do it like this and then just get the spring on it. Let's see. That might be the way to do it right there. Yeah, okay. Like that. That worked. So this thing right here, it's on a lever. You're going to want that to make contact with this. So if we look at this, it's longer on this side than it is on this side. We want the side that's got the plunger, I guess you could say, to go in. Something like that. Like that. And now we're gonna get a long skinny spring. And they're gonna go on these holes down here from one end. Maybe. It's hard to hold all this stuff together and make this happen. See what I mean? It's, it's real hard to film and do all this stuff. I know I'm making, maybe it sounds like an excuse. It's just, it's so tedious. It's a little time consuming. But. Drum brakes are drum brakes. There we go. Not quite all the way there. There we go. I'm getting a little bit better now. So there's more to do down here. I'm not there yet because we've got to prepare the, the crossbar. So here's how we're going to do that. Crossbar, and it's raining so it's going to be loud, sorry, has this bump that goes up. It has a skinnier side and a fatter side. The skinnier side gets a spring. It's the way you put it on. So it's gonna go just like that. Because it's got a shoulder for it, it's smaller here. And that's what's gonna help keep this dude in check here to get it down and in place. When it's cold. There we go. Now we're doing a little better. So here's the order in which this stuff needs to go. So it needs to have this piece, then it needs to have this piece and the little spring on the inside. And you've got to try to hold it all together, which is not fun. Be a lot easier with two people. Right side, 
we need this wire retainer and we got to put the spring through it before we put the spring through this side so let me put it in place which is right here let me put this in place There it goes. All right. Now our last piece here. You wrap this cable around there. I'll have to show you what has to happen down here. I'm sure it's loud. So I'm going around the guide up here. Very important. Coming. There's a spring. Hey, we're almost there. There we go. It is the right size. Okay. What? What fun that was. And That's interesting. But guys, we're done. <laughs> uh, for the most part, we're done. Still a few things we have to do. But, you see how this is engaging on the, and it's making the clicks when I turn it. And if I pull it off, I can turn it the other way. That's what we want. Well, anyway, for the most part, this is in place. And, uh, I think there's a might be pulling on it back here which I might need to make sure this is seated so I'll mess with that in a minute but for the most part that's the drum brakes if you've never done them before find someone that knows how to do them and ask them to give you a hand because it it's tedious it takes some time and it takes it takes a little bit of knowledge sometimes uh, from somebody else to help you out with these things I know this is probably not the greatest tutorial in the world and I don't really want it to be a tutorial. I just want y'all to know that I had to do this for sick week, right? <laughs> Let me get on the other side and uh, go from there. All right, we got one last thing to do here uh, before I bleed them. And that's, we've got to adjust the drums. So I've got the truck in neutral so I can spin the drum. And here's what I'm talking about. So, drum goes on and off pretty easy, and then we can spin it. This is actually adjusted pretty well because I can hear just a little bit or feel just a little bit of resistance when I turn it. But if you wanted to change that, you would come down here to this. Uh, you know the uh, adjuster and turn it one way to move it out so it spreads it turn it another way to move it in and you just do that just enough and so where you feel just a little resistance when you're spinning it all right I like it so that part's done I'm gonna bleed it I've showed that before the channel a few times so just let me get that done and then we'll move on to what's next well Greg's over here and since I have an extra hand we're gonna finish up a little bit of this prep after we joke about the fact that somebody just came by the house and asked if they could buy my Chevelle yeah you don't own a chevelle. I, I don't own a chevelle but you know can i buy you want to sell that chevelle so no we just told him no um anyway it's probably been a bit since you guys seen this truck and uh it's been a bit since we moved it i think i don't think we've started this thing since january july august july something july something like that summertime greg just cleaned out the back which was nice 
is hot and dirty. And uh, the interior is still immaculate condition. You know, just absolutely original. If we get panels in the dash back in. It'll look better, yeah. It'll look better. I still have the dash over there, so. And I got a dash at storage. Yeah, the one at the storage we're going to put in because it's in better shape. It's in better shape. But yeah, this dash donated itself to my truck, so that's why yeah. it's not in here. But that red thing there is going to go here. Um, that should be self explanatory enough. Um, paint's holding up real well on the black truck, as you can see, you know. And, uh,. We're gonna start working on this thing though pretty soon. And it, if you haven't heard. It's gotta get mounts in the transmission. Yeah, we're gonna put a Dodge V10 and 47 RE in it. And we have it. It's gonna happen soon after sick week. So, anyway, we're gonna also put a camper on it because why not? And uh, I still have to show you our su surprise for sick week, which may not be this video, but it'll probably be next. So. Let's get this thing swapped over and you can watch us struggle. I wonder if I can just... Yeah, cause that's I'm thinking just like press up. Like, like It'll be good for my back. Let me... Is that half? Oh. Let me get this half. You ready? Yep. yep. Very good. Oh! Alright. We gotta fix it a little bit, something first, before we get too far. Yeah, maybe we could use the come along hook. It's gonna work. Uh, no. uh, Not quite, huh? Dang, you already been in it yourself. Careful. Oh, that's it, dude. Holy crap! Good job! Look at that! Body man over here! Fabricator. Fabricator. Dude, that was... Maybe just a little bit at that other crease. Right here? Yeah. Dude, good job! That was... That was a lot easier than I thought, man. Genius, Gump. <laughs> that was uh, bent back a lot easier than we thought it was going to. Good job. That's good to know. I know. Now we know this. Oh, we can get we can fix cramps too. All right. Now let's see if we can get this uh, thing moved over. So the brakes are working like they're supposed to in the rear. The weight reduction is done and converted to the black 93 dakota and it actually kind of looks cool um we're eventually going to paint this thing black anyway so it'll, it'll look good on there and uh we're getting closer um i don't know if i showed you all this already or not but been doing some body work on top and that's what i still got some more to do and i want to try to get this thing on one color so I'm gonna work on painting the bed, cleaning it all up. This, those grease marks and stuff that should come off. And uh, yeah, it's a topless truck again. How risque, right? And the uh, black truck now looks like a race truck, especially with the racing stripes that we custom installed on that thing. What are you finding in there? Still no water, no nothing. Do nah. you think it all leaked out? Maybe. Passenger window was cracked. Oh yeah. Yeah, but oh that in. that thing's like a Sahara desert in there. Oh yeah, there's no water in the radiator. That's good for it. There's no fan on it either. It's just the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> like we got. Look at that. It's doing some good, dude. Yeah. It's uh, it's like a motorcycle. It loses all the coolant through the or the you know heat through the fins. That's what I'm thinking. Well, yeah, we're onto something. Pretty soon, this whole thing will come out. Yeah, whatever. It'll, it'll have two more songs. And yet, V10 will go in. And it'll be to about, like, here. 
and then accessories and then we're gonna have to cut anyway we got a lot to do so I'm gonna still get back after it I'm gonna get started on yeah get started on some more of the paint and body work on this thing I love these new headlights that have a bunch of moisture in them but what are you gonna do but that's gonna wrap it up for this one and uh, get started on some more race race week stuff including installing this guy and uh, some beautification so if you like this stuff you like Dakotas you like Ram Chargers you like Novas you like Bel Airs you like Typhoons you like Sonoma GTs we got a little bit of everything we even have a Dakota RT that still has the uh, 5.9 in it which is probably one of the best looking RTs around for its age and uh, you want to check that stuff out and you haven't yet please consider subscribing and uh we're gonna get going smash that like button yeah <laughs> i hate that ring term that. ring that bell yeah anyway y'all know the deal until next time y'all be good <laughs>